Hi, I'm John Romine. I'm Director of Computing for the Henry Samueli School of Engineering here at the University of California, Irvine. I'm presenting today about writing a Drupal external authentication module. Specifically, I'll be talking about the module that we wrote for, that I wrote for here for UCI to authenticate with the UCI identity, which calls a UCI net ID. An overview of the talk, I'll, I'll talk about issues and how accounts are created and who gets an account. Uh, the goals of the UCI net ID module itself. The Drupal API, the hooks that an authentication module would use. I'll show you a lot of example code from this module, but I'll warn you the examples in the PowerPoint are abstracted, uh, abridged. If you want to see the code, it's available there on the website. And last, I'll talk about user interface and user experience. So issues. Are you authenticating locally or externally? Do you use local accounts or are you using some kind of external database or is it some combination of the two? What do you do about accounts like admin and root? If someone's in your campus-wide or organizational-wide directory with a name, do they automatically have an access uh, account on Drupal or are they separate? They need to be attached. What kind of directory are you using? Are you authenticating users on this server, such as, say, with the et cetera password file or something like that, active, uh, or is it on an external server like LDAP or Active Directory? Who controls creating accounts on Drupal? Can visitors create their own accounts, or is it only by policy? Does everyone in your organization get an account on your Drupal site, or is it only certain people? And what's the difference between identity and username? Is your Drupal login? or say your UCI login, is that your identity or are those separate things? So there's a lot of user authentication modules available for Drupal uh, and my advice would be if you can use one of these, please just go ahead and do so. Uh, OpenID, that, that's my favorite. I am pushing for the campus to use OpenID here at UC Irvine. Uh, we do have LDAP at UCI, but it's sort of an afterthought. We're still using an old directory service. Um, CAS is Central Authentication Service. It's, it's a Java thing, Java and Administration Special Interest Group. It's used by uPortal, uh, another platform. We are using uPortal here at UC Irvine. It's used for the, the uh, staff portal called snap.uci.edu. Web Server Auth is a module that lets you uh, control access through the HT access file. And last, the site network module, that's the one that used to be called the Drupal module in Drupal 5. It lets you log into one Drupal site through an account on another Drupal site. So the goals of my module, we wanted single click login. So you would just click, you'd be logged in, that would be it. And if you don't already have an account on the Drupal site, you would do the same exact thing. You would single click, you would be logged in and we would auto create your account right then. Uh, for my user community, it had to work that way. The UCI NetID authentication is optional, so your UCI NetID authentication gets attached to your Drupal account, but it's still separate. You don't have to have a UCI NetID to have a Drupal account. That's very important for us for if we need to give Drupal accounts to people who aren't in the campus system. The users can attach or remove their UCI NetID from their own account without me getting involved in that. The administrator can edit the UCI NetID attachment to their account, and no changes to the Drupal core. I didn't want to have to maintain a bunch of patches to core modules. So what does identity at UCI look like? Everyone at UCI gets a site-wide login name. It's currently eight characters. Used to be it was only six characters. Uh, the limits on that trace back to BitNet, if you can believe that, back in the 80s. Um, and, of course, Unix hosts that, that only supported uh, eight character names. They're talking now about expanding that to 64, 32 to 64 characters. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, right. External authentication? You're in the right place. Okay. UCI is still using a directory service called PHQI, another, uh, another name called the CSO name server from Purdue. It was very popular with Eudora back in the late 80s to 90s. That's still UCI's primary directory service. They are in the process of transitioning to LDAP. They have a variety of other authentication systems on campus that are used by different things. They have Kerberos, uh, they have Radius, 
that they're using for, they used it for dial-up for quite a long time. Other things about a UCI Net ID, it can change. They generally don't like it to, but if you change your name, they'll let you change your UCI Net ID. So it's not a good, uh, the UCI Net ID is not a good identifier to, to prove your identity because it will change over time. Another thing that can happen is that if you're um, Mike Stewart and you go to college here, you probably get M. Stewart as your login name, and once you graduate, it eventually gets reused by the next guy who comes here, happens to be named Mike Stewart. So it, it gets reused over time. So also looking at a record that says Mike Stewart made this change to something, you don't really know which Mike Stewart you're talking about. In response to that, the, the campus has added a 12-digit identifier called Campus ID. It's just a 12-digit number. It's intended to be unique. It's intended to be persistent. It's intended to be unrestricted. They have a lot of issues with, with uh, confidentiality. They don't want to use social security number. Even employee and student ID numbers are considered confidential. But no one wants to log in with a 12-digit identifier. So that's why they keep using the UCI Net ID as the login name. Seems like it's likely to continue. So what are we looking at in Drupal? Well, we use hook menu to add menu items and callbacks for paths within Drupal. Hook user gets called when something happens to a user. And we're going to use that to notice when a user first logs in after authenticating with his UCI Net ID. Hook form alter is used to add fields to the user profile and user register forms. User external load, that's probably one you haven't seen before. It does what's called an auth map lookup and then calls user load. I'll, I'll talk about auth map in a second. User external login finishes up your login. It's basically like posting the login form. So what is auth map? Auth map is a thing that was in, I guess, Drupal 5, maybe earlier, and it was what allowed you to log into one Drupal site with your Drupal account on another site. Now, auth map is a table that looks like this. It's got four fields, a uh, unique identifier, your user ID, an auth name string, and a module string. So I haven't used this with, uh, with Drupal 5 or earlier, but I'm guessing that the auth name string looked something like username at remote.host.com. Uh, and then the module was probably Drupal. Um, I built my UCI Net ID module off of a lot of different modules that I looked at earlier, but principally the OpenID module. The OpenID does use this auth map table, and so you can see my OpenID entry is in there. And yeah, question? Uh, images falling off the screen there. Uh, like, oh. Yeah, does that help? Oh, yes, I sure do. Let's see what we can do. 